All right, you nerds, what's up guys? It's Apollo here and welcome back to the battlefield. Once again, we are playing Empire Total War and this is the Darth mod. This is also part of the Empire Total War World Cup that has been going on the past like three weeks. Uh, we are actually down to our top eight teams. So originally we started with 16. Well, half of them are moving forward to the single elimination bracket. Uh, now, at the end of this battle, I'm going to go over all the stats and everything on the Discord. If you guys want to stay up to date with this tournament, I highly recommend you join the Discord, which is linked down below. But yeah, again, at the end of the video, after the battle, I will be showing you all the teams that uh, progressed into the uh, single elimination bracket section of the tournament and how every nation did in this uh, tournament so far so today of course we've got the winged hussars added again uh, so I thought oh, these aren't the winged hussars. here they are over here so yeah winged hussars on the battlefield these guys look sick uh, so yeah we got a great matchup here we got Poland two Polish armies of course taking on two Ottoman empires so this is a uh, classic classic matchup that I felt I had to show. Uh, so yeah, we've got this cool little hill in the middle here that they're gonna have to fight over. Poland is actually pushing forward, technically Poland-Lithuania, pushing forward here to try to take this hill. Now I wanna remind you guys, with this Empire Total War tournament, the players are from these nations or their ancestry is from these nations. It was actually really cool that uh, you know these players could represent where they're from and fight in this uh, in this tournament and uh, fight for their country. That was the whole point of this uh, Empire World Cup tournament, uh, and it's just pretty cool that this uh, this tournament hasn't fallen apart and the teams are actually playing. And it took a lot of hard work from the admins, team leaders, and refs, and I thank all of you guys for working so hard on making this tournament come uh, come to a finish. Which again, it's still not over yet, but we are down to the last eight teams. So yeah, Poland's still marching forward here. Uh, finally, the Ottoman Empire has pushed up some uh, jetted infantry. Uh, so they've got a nice long line of inf infantry. Just kind of barely at the slope here, right at the top, right behind the top of the hill. I kind of like that. It seems like they're kind of using it as a natural barrier. Uh, they do, do have some uh, rifles in the front here trying to skirmish down the incoming... Uh, um, Polish and uh, same thing over here we've got some more skirmishers in the front uh, same thing here so yeah they're just kind of fishing uh, the Polish forces with those skirmishers just seeing what they got now I'm not really seeing a lot of skirmishers from the Polish forces uh, so it seems that they're just kind of going heavy on uh, well here's some riflemen they're not in skirmish formation though but yeah it definitely seems like they're going heavy on infantry a lot of militia over here too and really we got to see the winged hussars in action here not only are they just badass but they're also really good uh, or badass looking uh, they're also really good so we need to see them in action and really uh, get some nice uh, charges there because they are a lance cav here so it's it's really going to come down to this unit if they can pull off a victory here because they are very expensive as well if I'm not mistaken and usually with an expensive unit you got to make sure you use them wisely or the money is for nothing so okay cancel that Poland does have some skirmishers but it just doesn't seem like they have as much as um, the Turks here the Ottoman Empire so we do have a classic little engagement here some stakes have been placed down by the Ottomans as they uh, continue to skirmish, this guy is blowing hard into that trumpet. Look at him. Can't hear it, though. It's a silent trumpet. Only Ottomans can hear it. Uh, but they are reloading their rifles and ready ready for the next volley there. And it seems like... Oh, oh hold on. We got some cab moving up. I think they're just getting a little bit closer. Good move by the Ottomans. You always want to make sure you have every element of your army nearby, right? You want to make sure that... Uh, if you need to rush in Cav right away, you can do it quickly, and they're not far behind. Always, always keep up with the elements of your army and, you know, the different the different units of your army. Make sure they're always nearby so they're constantly supporting each other. So line infantry pushing forward. Still nothing crazy yet. Just a very light skirmish between these forces. Uh, same thing over here on this side. So it's just... All the way down this battle line, it is just complete skirmishing and uh, two armies that are very passive 
afraid to make a, uh, a hasty move here. So Poland reloading the rifles over there. Again, the skirmishing has begun. And really, the skirmishing is light from... Honestly, from both sides. I mean, it's not like there's a ton of skirmishers. Now, here we go. Poland is getting aggressive here. It is starting to rain as well. I don't know if that's going to affect the shots there. Uh, but the riflemen are getting into position and ready to open fire. One thing you got to you gotta keep aware of is the terrain. You got to make sure that your shots aren't just going into the dirt. Because your units will do that. Your soldiers will do that. If you tell them to fire from behind a hill, they will fire straight into the dirt. So it's really important. Nice. It's really important that uh, you, you make sure you're in a good angle. Oh, here we go. Here we go. What is this? Light Dragoons pushing forward. Are they going to do anything here? Wait, what's this over here as well? We've got a push of militia charging up as well. Poland getting aggressive here. I like it. Let's see. I think they're going to try to break down some of these skirmishers. The skirmishers naturally of the Ottoman Empire are going to fall back. And they've got some uh, jetted infantry ready to hold. And they're going to pop a shot right in. Wait. Do they not have a shot ready? Do they not have a shot ready? It doesn't look like it in the militia. Oh, they just barely get a shot there. But it doesn't really do any damage. And Poland is able to get their men in there. But really, I mean, for no success there. Because their militia. Oh, but maybe it was a distraction because we've got light dragoons pushing in, opening fire, but taking many casualties as they try to soften up the uh, the Ottoman Empire skirmishers. They're very aggressive move, move there. Very, very dangerous move there. I'm not sure why they would push up light dragoons right in the front lines of the Ottoman Empire, uh, but yeah, they, they paid for it for sure. Now we've got uh, guards pushing forward. Uh, so he's closing in the infantry and trying to get aggressive here. I like it. Uh, over on this side. Oh, the opposite. We've got uh, some Lancer Cavs, some melee cav here uh, charging in of the Ottoman Empire into the line infantry of Poland. But they quickly form a square and they're desperately holding on to this point. The winged hussars are waiting in reserve back over here. And it's still pretty calm over on this side. So let's go back over to the juicy side where things are getting hot and wild. Oh, nice. Look at that. He's got the Dragoons. That's a pretty cool setup here. Dragoons right behind his guards. As they, uh, because they are, you know, they're slightly up on this. They're up on their high horse. If you get, if you get what I'm saying. Uh, but yeah, they are right behind the line infantry as the line infantry is opening fire down on the Ottomans. Ottomans, I mean, Ottomans really haven't taken, well, they're taking some casualties over here. They've got these, uh, really awesome looking, uh, musketeers here with the cloaks and so fabulous over here with these vests. Look at those muscles on these guys. Uh, but yeah, they are kind of just holding position. Uh, and this has been a... This is some fierce line battle fighting here. Guard grenadiers also near the front. More line infantry opening fire onto the enemy. Just flying over here. Making sure we're not missing anything. It looks like it's still pretty calm. No, actually, there's a bit of a cab charge. Look at this. A cab charge by some horsemen by the Ottoman Empire into the rifles of Poland and they're gonna wipe them out and they're gonna easily retreat from this fight and um, I like the little shields they have on their their arms but yeah they're falling back and that was a good move by the Ottoman Empire uh, softening up the rifles of Poland rifles of the Ottoman Empire still just skirmishing down Poland Poland is Moving up the guards a little bit closer. I think they want to try to get a little bit more accurate shots. Ooh, that looked like friendly fire. Might want to move up these uh, light dragoons a little bit closer. It looks like he's shooting his own men in the back. I don't know. That's what it looked like for me. Saw a lot of blood in the back line after they fired. Firing by rank. Love it. Neil. Second rate. Fire. Boom. So they're really trying to lay down the uh, the fire on them, and it does seem like they are starting to chip away at these units, but the Ottomans just kind of sta are standing there and taking it. I'm surprised the Ottomans haven't made a move, maybe because they're relying on other flanks of the battle. Like over here, this is a pretty heated uh, fight as well. Look at this. Second rank. Third rank. I think they, yeah, they do three ranks. Oh, here we go. And here comes the winged hussars. Oh my god, please get a good charge. This is the moment we've all been waiting for. Come on, winged hussars, charge! Yeah! 
Not a great charge. I don't know what's happening here. They're just kind of walking into him. But hey, they're in the front line taking them on. This is awesome. They're just pushing. Trying to just run through them. Oh my god, look at this. What is this? Just kind of walking. Excuse me, pardon me. Are they going for the back lines? Are they going for this cab? Yeah, they're charging for the cab now. Awesome. Oh, over here as well, we've got more cav. More wing to SARS charging in. The charge of wing to SARS. They might want to close in with infantry to support this charge. But uh, they're causing a lot of breaking over here on this side. That's really good for uh, Poland. Come on, wing to SARS. You got this. You got this. They're finding themselves surrounded, though, with no support. And the Wing Tassars might just get wiped here. But maybe it's worth it. Maybe their sacrifice here will be worth it. Because over on this side, they are crushing a lot of these guys. They might not want to fight these Musketeers. Yeah, close in the infantry. Send up more support. And very wisely, the Ottoman Empire is trying to close off the flank here. They've got some jetted infantry kind of just angled at where they lost their ground. And they're pushing up more troops, forming square against the uh, winged hussars. And I think that's going to be it from the winged hussars. That was a pretty cool charge right there. Um, it was pretty devastating, at least on this. Actually, no, they're not breaking. My bad. They still have 44 men in there. That's crazy these winged hussars are good. Uh, but they are causing a lot of damage on this Ottoman flank. And still really nothing going on here. Well, I shouldn't say that. We do have more winged Tassars who pushed up forward. We got men trying to form square quickly as the Ottomans are coming in. Let's see if they charge. They're going to charge right into that squir square. Squirrel. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Just seemed like they just walked right through that square. They're just running right by it, just kind of like the winged hussars did. Now the winged hussars are going to counter charge. And there's that counter counter charge. Let's see if it's enough to defeat the Ottoman Cav. And now we got more Cav coming in this way. Look at this, running over their own guys a little bit. The hussars, these are just normal hussars. They need to drink some Red Bull to get some wings. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, good charge there. Um, very good surprise charge. And again, the Ottomans are taking a beating here. Uh, once again, forming square against the Ottoman Empire as they charge in more calf. They, uh, the Polish barely get their square formation here. Oh, this guy just killed them. I love this little shield here. That's really cool. And then over here, we've got some horsemen opening fire on the Polish. Poland Hussars are now rushing the other horsemen who are sitting back firing on the uh, infantry. And let's see what's going on. It looks like things have died down in the center, or maybe they never even really picked up. But the Ottomans are on a full retreat over here. Oh yeah, full retreat. And it looks like we had a bit of a cab charge over on this side as well, but Poland was able to form a square. Look at this though. Oh no, one of the Polish generals have died in this fight. Here comes another charge. Winged Hussars are at it again. As uh, this unit is now at half strength, a little less than half strength now. Falling back, trying to support their infantry where they can. Polish infantry pushing forward. Oh my god! Did you see that? The line infantry getting evaporated. Was that? No way. No way was that from the 20-foot pounder artillery. Look at this. Look at this fancy little artillery. Uh, that's a crazy amount of distance to get, like, grape shot there. Is, that seems really far. But, yeah, they land a deadly blow. And that's really going to cause these line infantry, line infantry troops to suffer. They're not even opening fire right now. It's a tragic. Just kind of getting slaughtered, and they do break there. They do break. 
Poland still pushing on this flank though, which is great, but the Ottoman Empire still has a lot of cav in reserve. All right, Poland holding square formation on this flank. This battle is a bloody one. A lot of Polish lines sitting in reserve, but we can say the same about the Ottoman Empire. A lot of troops over here. In fact, Poland looks kind of light over here. This is not looking good. And the Ottoman Empire, I think they could easily just push forward and wipe out a ton of these Polish uh, soldiers. Very cool. Reloading, firing by rank. Line infantry. Yeah, see, like this right here, they're both pretty much wasting shots. I don't think they're landing any kills because of the terrain. Oh, it's always good to zoom in and look at the terrain and be like, yeah, that's not hitting anybody. So they might want to push forward. I think that's why the Ottoman Empire is pushing forward. There we go. Now they're starting to kill each other. So Poland is at a bit of a standstill over here. Uh, but now we got a push of riflemen going down the center, trying to put pressure on the Ottoman Empire. Over on this side, Poland still, these brave men, the line infantry here, holding in square formation against these uh, Janissary musketeers. If I'm not mistaken, Janissaries are Christian Christ, Christian soldiers that are uh, kidnapped by a very young age and trained to be elite soldiers. They lift a lot. I mean, look at those arms. Uh, but yeah, they're trying to hold this uh, this square. It's going to be a close battle. It looks like... Uh, it looks like the Ottoman Empire is winning slightly, but you never know, that can change. And it does seem like Poland overall has been defeated on this very far flank. And now the line battle is really picking up here. Smoke is everywhere. Uh, round balls are flying everywhere. Boom. Boom. So yeah, pretty pretty intense fighting indeed in the center. And things are at a bit of a standstill over here. We, we saw so much carnage over here. But now it just seems that the two armies are kind of just resting and just seeing what they can do. Again, Poland, I mean, it looks fairly even here. Where are the winged hussars? Send them in again. Got 52 over here kind of waiting in the tree line, resting them up for another charge. Oh, nice. A little charge here between, uh, looks like infantry and guard grenadiers. Guard grenadiers do, they both break. <laughs> They're both breaking. They engage like, nah, forget this. We're running. Uh, does the Polish have, do the Polish have, uh, I don't think they have artillery. Uh, I, now that I think about it, I don't think I've seen any Polish artillery. That's a huge loss. I'm not sure why they wouldn't bring artillery, but uh, I think they're they're suffering the consequences of it by just getting shelled by the Ottoman artillery as this line battle goes on. Nice, good little volley there. Oh, here comes the charge from the winged hussars. Nice. <laughs> They're now down to 39, but unfortunately they are breaking. Uh, they are also attacking the uh, the Ottoman cab as well. Well, there we go. They kind of recovered there a little bit. It doesn't matter. The winged hussars are not going to last much longer. Down to 35. I think at this point they're just trying to get as many kills as possible until they're wiped out. So yeah, they're just continuously opening fire on this center line here. And uh, it's still, I mean, both sides still have very healthy numbers, so it doesn't seem like they're killing a lot. And here we go. 
Poland pushing up a little bit here. Got some line infantry moving forward. And the Ottomans are charging in some rifles as well. So I don't know why they're charging in skirmishers. And oh god, look at that artillery. You see that land in the back there? Oh man. Yeah, I, again, I don't know why Poland didn't bring any artillery. It just seems like absolutely vital to any, uh, you know, any battlefield at this time. And the Ottomans seem to, uh, seems to be taking this battle. At least so far, uh, it seems that the Ottomans are starting to get control over here. They have now wiped out this Polish flank. Uh, more uh, jetted infantry charging in. We've got a square formation of uh, Polish and Lithuanian infantry doing the best they can, but it's not going to last. And they are going to crumble. They're going to fall apart. So the guards are wavering, and uh, they put up a, a respected last stand here, but it's not going to be enough. And the Ottomans have free roam here to flank around the Polish forces. Uh, what Poland needs to do at this point is consolid consolidate his forces. I think they should grab all of these men, start pushing towards it, consolidate in the center, uh, and try to put up some sort of last stand here. Because if you stretch out these men too thin, you just don't have enough compared to the Ottoman Empire. So it's going to come down to hopefully your men can hold any, like, a, a, like a, you know, with all your forces consolidated, basically. Uh, but I just don't think that's going to happen. And here we go. Uh, we've got the general's bodyguard charging in. Doing what he can, but this general's general most likely will die here. I don't know if this is the same general that died earlier. But uh, sure enough, they're breaking the general. And this uh, Ottoman flank here is going to cause chaos. This center is completely shattered. And it seems that, yes, the Ottomans are going to take this one. Really, what's the strongest part of the Polish army is right here. This very far, this would be their right flank. Um, th again, they, they've got to either, one, get super aggressive and defeat the Ottomans in front of them very quickly and then turn and all the victorious Ottomans over here or fall back and consolidate and try to your best to kill all these Ottomans. It just seems like it's going to be a pretty desperate uh, situation. And even if Poland cons consolidated his forces, it's not like he could fall back to artillery. I mean, that's why artillery oftentimes is so effective because you can fall back to it, turn on canister shot, and it will cause the enemy to kind of hesitate there a little bit. It's like, well, we can't just mindlessly charge in the smaller numbers because we'll take a lot of casualties because of the uh, the grape shot or the canister shot. Uh, and, you know, Poland doesn't have that. Uh, and, uh, yeah, I mean, that's, for at least personally for me, that's what it's always been about, like, um, you know, falling back to the safety of artillery. But uh, it just doesn't seem like that's going to be happening for Poland. And yeah, you know, if I was the Ottomans, hey, you don't have to worry about artillery. You can just charge in and not even worry. I mean, you'll take casualties as, you know, they're they're lined up waiting for you. But it doesn't matter. The Ottomans have so many troops that uh, it, it's not going to really affect them. Oh, good volley there. Good volley. Let's see if they can land a couple more good hits on these guys before they charge in. Oh, nice. I think that might be the last one. Let's see. Third row, third row. Eh, they get a couple more shots there, but not really killing much. And uh, the Poland might hold here. They're outnumbered, but maybe uh, the Ottomans took heavy casual or uh, morale losses there because of the uh, multiple volleys into them. But it doesn't seem like it. And this is a gruesome bayonet battle right here between these two red armies. And um, same thing over here. The Ottomans are going in for a charge. And things are getting pretty wild right now. Ottoman cab in the back lines of the, uh, the Polish infantry storming across the battlefield. And they're most likely going to charge against these uh, grenadiers who are not even looking the right way. So uh, I think it's safe to say at this point... I don't want to assume. I don't want to jump the gun here because there's still a lot of Polish forces here. And they still have winged hussars, and you know, 
If they still have wings, Hussars, they still have hope. But I don't know why they're just kind of sitting here. Like, why aren't they charging? He must be microing elsewhere. Yeah, see, he's trying to fight this battle over here. And he's got his winged Hussars over here. But, yeah, this is not good. This is a unit that's too expensive to just, just be left sitting here. Like, please just move them. Do something, like, charge something. Try to kill some Ottomans, you know. Before they are, uh, wiped out. But it doesn't look like it's gonna be too good. The Jeddit infantry charging in. And it seems... Yeah, there they go. Just charging winged hussars. Finally, they're moving. Finally, they're moving. But it's kind of too late. <laughs> what are they attacking? Yeah, you know, with winged hussars, you want to get a bit of a, a charge bonus. Which they didn't really get there. They didn't get that charge bonus. So, I don't know what's happening there. But the micro is kind of falling apart. Between these two armies. Look at the look at the mini map here. Look at this. What is this? There's no front line anymore. So I don't know if we have a desync over here or things are just getting wild. All hot and hot and wild. Because we got like Ottomans lining up awkwardly, looking the wrong way and stuff. Unfortunately, I think we have a desync. If I'm not mistaken. There's a proper fight over here. So yeah, the Jeddit infantry are uh, taking on that line infantry of Poland, Lithuania. You have a little bit of a gunfire fight over here. They're still taking on these uh, Janissary Grenadiers. who are just kind of sitting there and taking it like champs. I like it. They form square over on this side for some apparent reason. Because they're getting surrounded. Also, there's enemy cab nearby. General's bodyguard. Kind of walking by some riflemen. And the fighting continues over here. So yeah, guys, you know what? I think uh, I think it's safe to say that this is a desync. Uh, this this happens with mods, you know, since we are using the Darth mod, because this is not normal. Two units sitting here. Yeah, it's not normal. <laughs> Just chilling. Hey, what's up, General? The Ottoman Empire. Nothing. How's it going, Polish rifles? Oh, not bad. I think we lost this battle. I lost a lot of friends, but you know. <sighs> I'm sick of, why do we fight? Why do we fight this? You know, it's, I don't, I don't know what's happening. So that's probably why the winged hussars were also standing there as well. And the game froze. So yeah, that's telling me that this is uh, a desync and the battle is over. Uh, so this was a Polish victory. Oh, I'm sorry. This was an Ottoman victory uh, here today. And, uh, and I'm pretty sure the Ottomans were, are going to move on to the, the eight team uh, t single bracket. So well, let, let's go. It's too bad we don't have stats to look at, but let's just go ahead and go to the Discord of the um, you know the tournament and look at the leaderboards and who are the eight teams that made it and and all that jazz. So uh, yeah, let's uh, let's go ahead and do that now. Okay, so here we are on the Discord, guys. So um, again, I recommend you join the Discord so this will help you stay up to date of how the teams are doing and everything. It's a really fun Discord. It's where people come out, play Empire. You know, we uh, we have like a meme channel where different teams are memeing each other with like historical memes, but it's all lighthearted. It's nothing serious. Uh, so let's look at um, the leaderboard, shall we? So if we go down here to leaderboard, this is where you can see how every team did. Now, uh, I want to remind you guys how this works. Uh, this was during the grouping phase. So there was four groups, four teams in each group. And uh, the teams would play, one match would be two battles. And if one team won, if one team won all the battles, it was considered three points. If one team won one battle and the other team won the other battle, so they tied, they both get one point. And if they, uh, if one team loses both the battles, they get zero points. So 
that's how the point system works and then the top two teams with the most points will be moving on to the eight team single elimination bracket just kind of like the uh football world cup so let's look at this right usa uh going in five and one so usa usa doing pretty good there uk right behind them with four and two with five points so uh usa and uk will be moving on to the eight team bracket go usa all right trying to show no bias here though uh central the central group here uh france going six and oh france is undefeated in this tournament so you know i'm also a french weeaboo so i'm rooting for them also netherlands and i'm i'm actually dutch by ancestry but netherlands uh or partially a little bit not a ton going four and two also a great record there so france and netherlands moving on from the central group uh the north group germany going six and oh so we have another undefeated team that's going to be moving on and then sweden right behind them going four and two so some great teams here that are going to be uh, moving on to the next round and then we have turkey which we just saw in action they're going five and one with seven points and right behind them is russia going uh with five points four and two so pretty much all the teams that moved on lost only two matches that's that's the most they lost so uh this was a very intense tournament and i do want to give some shout outs here portugal just barely missing it going three and three there um i think that's it i think everybody else kind of poland went one and five unfortunately poland kind of struggled greece two and four uh norway two and four denmark unfortunately zero oh and six but to be fair this this tournament is not exactly super balanced um because some of the nations are just lacking in roster selection uh, so there, it's not going to be perfect. Austria going 0 and 6, Italy going 2 and 4, Spain going 0 and 6, and Portugal, of course, we saw going 3 and 3. So let's go ahead and see these matchups here. So if we go over here, this is the eight-team bracket. This is how it's going to work: West winner against East, uh, East runner-up. Uh, so and, and then so on and so forth. Also, there's going to be a third place little finale matchup, and then the actual finale between the last two t uh, teams standing. So, if we look over here, we've got USA taking on Russia, Germany taking on the Netherlands, France taking on Sweden. That's going to be a good matchup there. Turkey versus Britain. So, yeah, we've got some great teams here. Again, we saw USA um, losing one game. Russia was the runner-up, so this is going to be a nice matchup. USA versus Russia, I kind of like that. Um, and so... <laughs> Let's see what it's going to take for these teams to win, right? So for USA to win, they're going to have to take on a good Russian team. Then they're going to move on. And if you're USA, you're going to want Netherlands to beat Germany because Germany is undefeated right now. They seem pretty scary. Uh, so you want, you definitely want an upset there and want Netherlands to win. And then, and then, of course, you can try to beat Netherlands and get to the... Uh, uh, to the finale uh, over here France and Sweden again f poor Sweden they're gonna be taking on an undefeated France but they can do it any team can beat any team in this this last eight remaining team bracket here uh, but uh, yeah definitely want Sweden to win. again if you want USA to win you want Sweden to win and then probably Britain to beat Turkey because Turkey seems really good um, but yeah, I mean, you can kind of look at these and see uh, what it's going to take for your favorite team to win. Um, of course, you want the better teams to be knocked out in the first round. Uh, but, you know, we'll see how this goes. I'm really excited. I'm definitely going for sure going to cover the third place matchup and the first place matchup. So uh, if we look at this again, we'll, we'll cover the two teams that make it here and then the two teams that lose but are fighting for third place. Um, so yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be a lot of fun. I'm really excited about this um, Again, join the discord if you haven't there's a link to it down below Also, I know this is a little late, but this video is also sponsored by Ivacy VPNs if you guys are looking for a great VPN um, You know for privacy or being able to download 
uh, UK Netflix, I always go to that, but you can download stuff that you can't in your country for whatever reason. VPNs are really, really important, really important these days, so definitely check it out. And of course, by using the link down below, you support my channel. Also, Dr. Phil is sending me a message here, so that's interesting. Uh, he's probably like, you're crazy, you need to come to a show and I need to talk to you. Uh, but yeah, that's gonna wrap it up here, guys, for today's battle in information about this tournament. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and I will see you guys next time on the battlefield.